you want to be a part of our live Ask Me Anything, where you ask Stephen Pope, that's me, a question live on camera, join this link with StreamYard. Once you join inside of StreamYard, uh, we can only have a maximum of 10 people in at any given time. And so uh, you'll enter into our private chat and say, hey, I want to ask Stephen about this. I want to ask him about PPC, SEO design, catalog troubles, whatever it might be. I then will select your question and add you into my stream. After we finish our conversation, I'll remove you from the stream and you can continue watching here on YouTube. We want to rotate through as many people as possible and offer a format that's never been done before. Basically, it's like the radio. When somebody calls up, asks their question, they go on the air and they do the next interview side by side. I want to be able to talk to as many Amazon sellers as possible because I love talking to Amazon sellers. So that's why we brought this StreamYard format along. So again, just log in with a link in StreamYard. We'll have that link at the top of this video here in the comment section. If you want to be alerted about the link to join StreamYard or you want to be alerted about other Amazon news, go over to myamazonguy.com slash subscribe. And put your email address in right here. That's our newsletter. Uh, we reach thousands of Amazon sellers and virtual assistants and everybody that wants to learn about things that are happening in the Amazon space. And as a heads up, if you join the StreamYard and don't ask a question in the chat within two minutes, we're going to remove you because we're capped with the number of people that can join the StreamYard. So if you just want to watch, you don't want to ask a question on camera, just watch here at YouTube, youtube.com slash my Amazon guy.
If you want to be a part of our live Ask Me Anything, where you ask Stephen Pope, that's me, a question live on camera, join this link with StreamYard. Once you join inside of StreamYard, uh, we can only have a maximum of 10 people in at any given time. And so uh, you'll enter into our private chat and say, hey, I want to ask Stephen about this. I want to ask him about PPC, SEO design, catalog troubles, whatever it might be. I then will select your question and add you into my stream. After we finish our conversation, I'll remove you from the stream and you can continue watching here on YouTube. We want to rotate through as many people as possible and offer a format that's never been done before. Basically, it's like the radio. When somebody calls up, asks their question, they go on the air and they do the next interview side by side. I want to be able to talk to as many Amazon sellers as possible because I love talking to Amazon sellers. That's why we brought this StreamYard format along. So again, just log in with a link in StreamYard. We'll have that link at the top of this video here in the comment section. If you want to be alerted about the link to join StreamYard or you want to be alerted about other Amazon news, go over to myamazonguy.com slash subscribe and put your email address in right here. That's our newsletter. Uh, we reach thousands of Amazon sellers and virtual assistants and everybody that wants to learn about things that are happening in the Amazon space. And as a heads up, if you join the StreamYard and don't ask a question in the chat within two minutes, we're going to remove you because we're capped with the number of people that can join the StreamYard. So if you just want to watch, you don't want to ask a question on camera, just watch here at YouTube, youtube.com slash my Amazon guy. Hi, welcome. This is the My Amazon Guy show. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And today, like we do every Thursday, we come and take live questions from Amazon sellers. That is live on camera questions. We have guests lined up behind the scenes ready to come on camera. But first, just a quick announcement. Uh, this week, we announced that we acquired Maximizing E-Commerce. Uh, this is run by Kevin Sanderson. And he and I have been working very closely for the past couple of years. He runs the number one digital summit for PPC um, uh, training and, and, and summits uh, for people to come in and teach all those sort of things. So really excited about that. Kevin is joining us as the new uh, vice president of marketing. And uh, we just actually shot the, the presentation that I'm going to give for the next Maximize E-Commerce Summit, which is coming up in February. So if you want to check that out, go over to maximizeecommerce.com uh, today and sign up for that. All right, so 
I'm excited. It's a new year. I've got new blood. I'm ready to roll. And we've got people to talk to today. So let's bring in Chantel. Uh, Chantel, you need to get your webcam on to ask your question. Are you ready to roll? All right. Well, while, while we wait for Chantel, we'll go to our next guest here. Let's go to Limbash. Hey, welcome again to the show. Hi. Hi, Steve. Uh, How can I help you? Yeah, so uh, I have a question. Actually, uh, one of our product, uh, which has a like UPC on the packaging, and now product get uh, negative reviews in initial stage. So how we can deal with it or how we can release that particular product? So I understand you have a UPC question. Um, give me a little bit more context. What, what else do you have? What was your question about the UPC specifically on the new product? You want to know how yeah, to change so it? Yeah, so UPC or? code. Yeah, UPC code is uh, on the packaging, on the packaging mm -hmm. design, and now how we can deal with that particular product because we have negative reviews in initial stage, and it's uh, like one star and two star only. Got it. So you're gonna restart the product. Uh, so yeah, first uh, three reviews are bad, but overall product is uh, selling good in the like initial days. So now we are confused how to deal with this particular product. How many, uh, what's the average star rating on the listing? Uh, one and a half. Okay. So it's it's garbage. Got it. Yeah. Um, why are they rating it low? What's the feedback you're getting? Uh, it's regarding, mainly regarding like package uh, get uh, uh, damaged because of snow. S did you say snow? Yeah. So two, I mean like uh, two of them, because of snow, because product get uh, product packaging get uh, like uh, moisture, and uh, that that cause the packaging bad when it okay. reach to customer. Never never trust Amazon to package your boxes. That's the lesson here. Uh, yeah. Some of you may know where I'm going to go with this when I pull this out. So this is my hot sauce bottle. I paid Amazon to do the bubble wrap for this. This is a four and a half pound bottle, by the way. It's glass. And when Amazon shipped this out, they put it into padded envelopes. They didn't ship it in boxes. Mm -hmm. So sounds like to me, you need to, you need to add an extra layer of brown boxing uh, to your unit yeah. and put the UPC on the outside of that. So what, what I would do yeah. is two things. One, I would ask Amazon to remove the negative product reviews. Okay. Uh, you're probably going to fail on that front, but you got to try. And two, I would relaunch the product on a new ASIN and fix the packaging to avoid that. Okay. Uh, so that's what I would recommend there, Lim Limbish. Any, any follow-up questions to that? UPC. Yeah, but uh, I mean, like we, we are not going to use, I mean, like we are not able to use same UPC, am I correct? If you make a new listing, you will need a new UPC, that is correct. So you'll, but you'll need to redo the packaging, but here's the good news. You could just mm -hmm. make the new listing with the new UPC, and then print okay. out new F and SKU barcodes and just put them over the top of the UPC. You can also pay okay, Amazon perfect. to add those labels and that's fine too. Perfect, yeah, thank you. So, so what you have in your future is pretty straightforward. It's just uncomfortable. It's a, it's a yeah. lot of work, but it's not hard, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. thank you, thank you very much, Steve. All right, no problem. Thanks for coming on, Lynn Besh. Great question about UPCs and such. We're gonna bring Emily in next. And by the way, after you guys are guests, I'm going to remove you from the stream here. You can keep watching over on uh, YouTube. So don't be alarmed when we kick you out. Got to make room for the next guest. Emily, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Stephen. And congratulations on the acquisition. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> really cool. Um, so my question is about um, FBM inventory. So during the holiday season, Amazon reduced our ability to restock um, our inventory, and so we set up FBM listings. Um, now that we're post-holiday season, our inventory levels have evened out, SBA is good to go, but we still have this FBM listing active. We put, we don't really want to mm -hmm. use it. Just wondering what's the best practice here to not hurt our listing. Um, can we close and, it out? Did you have a duplicate SKU for FBA also live? Yes. Okay. Um, Honestly, there's no reason to close it uh, because if F, so, so let's say, for example, um, Amazon all of a sudden starts doing five day prime on FBA, which they have done several times in the past year. 
Uh, it looks like Emily, you might have frozen for us. Uh, but in okay. any case, if Amazon uh, does five day prime on FBA, but you have FBM as a backup, it'll automatically take over the buy box. Now, if you don't want to take any FBM orders, that's okay. Go ahead and put zero on your FBM inventory and just and, and you can close it out. No problem. Um, there right. will be no risk to your listing of any kind. However, if you stock out at FBA, you're losing out on an opportunity to have FBM as a backup. And so if you're okay doing FBM, I would leave it live. Just put it at a dollar higher. And then mm -hmm. if FBA stocks out for any reason, FBM kicks in and you ship it out. Um, I, I'm not sure what you caught of that because you were kind of cutting in and out on the video, but um, what are your thoughts? Great. Thank you so much, Stephen. Appreciate it. Big help. And, and, any follow-up there? Or did that make sense? No, that all makes sense. Uh, we'll just add a dollar and keep it active. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and for those that are wondering, you know, how easy is it is to set this up? It's quite easy. Um, I'll, I'll demonstrate it real quick on my computer so you guys can see it. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to hit present. We're going to go over to my, uh, let's see here. Here we go. Okay, so in here, if we grab one of my listings, I've got FBA stock on. Let's do Lord of the Rings. So here you can see we have a parentage. There's four SKUs, two ASINs. So if we go to the live listing, you can see there's two options, 12 and a 30 ounce. Not four options, there's only two. And the reason for that is because each of our FBAs has FBM backup inventory. Uh, and we actually did stock out of our large cup, which you can see here. So on the large cup, somebody can purchase that. Now, in my case, I have the prices the same, but I generally recommend for most people to have FBM a dollar higher if they're trying to av um, avoid taking the orders. Uh, in my case, I don't mind taking the orders. Um, and then here you can see in the new from, you can see both options just like this. Um, none of this would hurt if you disable it. So if you wanted to disable it, you just come in here and type zero and hit save. You'd be paused. But as long as you can have it on, I recommend it. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks. Thanks for coming on, Emily. Um, all right. Good question on FBM inventory coming out of, of the chaotic FBA uh, Christmas rush. A lot of people are out of stock in January. This is um, the month that a lot, a lot of people are out of stock. Um, all right. Let's add in Jeff Allen. You're like a staple of the show, man. So and is my got, dog. And we got the dog wagging the tail and everything. What can I do for you today? Hey, um, we all know that virtual bundles do not work, right? Well, we we don't know if they do work, but we don't think they work, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and there's no real way to track it outside of the individual ASIN, right? What, what I recently discovered was is that all sales on virtual bundles tracks to the individual ASIN. Right. <laughs> and so there's no way for you to know I got 50 bundle orders or I got no bundle orders. So we're all running with our heads cut off. Uh, generally speaking, here is the principle I would, I would respond to virtual bundles, though, is when in doubt, take as much space up on a listing as right. you possibly can. And the reason for that is it's the opposite of an e-commerce website. On an e-commerce website, you want to be as simplified as possible. Uh, so for example, let's go over to my, I, we just launched a new service called Pope Plus. And, and so if, if I want somebody to purchase from me on this website, and I, I hope everybody in this, on this podcast watching this will sign up, of course, um, all they have to do is click this button and place an order and they're done. On Amazon, it's a little bit different, right? So if we go to my House of Dragon Tumblr right here, I can add add to cart, but if I start scrolling down like this, there's an ad, there's an ad, there's an ad, here's some more ads, here's an ad, an ad, an ad, an ad, an ad and lots and lots more ads, right? And then we got a brand story, uh, taking up as much content as possible, which is cool to take horizontal. Uh, I, I, I think I have a virtual bundle somewhere. I'd have How to think do you about know what the attribution is when somebody clicks on if it's not an ad, if it's one of the other random things you can add to cart. Yeah, it's impossible to get the attribution right. So on my shark listings, I do have some virtual bundles up. Uh, but what's really weird about them is you have to click on 
it only shows up on one of the SKUs. So mama and baby right here. Right. If we go over to the mama shirt, it won't show up on that one, which is stupid, right? Like you, make any sense. Yeah. So, so here I clicked on mama and, and it disappears. Well, if it's a good bundle to have on baby shark, why is it not on mama shark too? Like that's so, so virtual bundles is kind of like one of those programs that Amazon set up and um, you know, was a good idea, but poor execution. <laughs> So just stay on your page for a second. How sure. do you get that buy with listing? The buy with, uh, which way are we talking? We're not oh, right here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so this is automatic and not in your control. Okay. Uh, however, if you spend a lot of advertising, so if I click this right here, uh, people that bought this um, baby shark frequently would also purchase grandma Saurus. Now that doesn't mean they bought it together. It just means that the same people who bought this bought this. So is it category related then or product related? It's not category related. As far as I can tell, I believe it's order related. So if, if somebody is, so like take this item, for example, this has a totally different category, right? Mm -hmm. Like why would this be linked to baby shark? <laughs> right. The reason it's linked is because the target avatar, the cu target customer who would likely purchase Baby Shark would also likely purchase this. OK, so it's all algorithm based. Yes. And the algorithm it, is a mystery to us. Well, it, I, mean, I mean, there's there's signs that you can figure out what's going on. So, for example, if you wanted to affect the algorithm, here's how I would do it. If I wanted my baby shark to show up on this listing, which it's not currently, the way that I would get that done is by placing direct ASIN ads onto this listing. Oh. So, so I would grab this ASIN right here and I'd go over to advertising, create some sponsored product, product targeting ads, and try and show up. So this is why there's a lot of brands out there um, who will target their own listings so that they... Will 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 show up in the frequently bought together. I do that all the time. Uh, it's 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 a very difficult strategy to swallow because you have to waste money to defend your turf. However, if you don't do it, here's what happens: Uncle Shark shows up with Mamasaurus, <laughs> right? or the OMG thing. And so um, these products are all linking together because they convert for those people. Uh, and so you could, you could advertise on your own products and, and show up there. And sometimes I do. And sometimes I don't definitely January is an off season for me. So I'm a little lighter on advertising this month, um, but come February, I might kick it back into gear. Um, other things that you can do is link it in the product grid down in a plus content. Mm -hmm. Most people are doing that today. Yep. But what most people are not doing enough of is this nice little brand story here. Um, See how many products we are linking. Um, we got four, eight, 12. How many can we count? You know, like 40 different products that are linking directly here. Now, if, if somebody is shopping my brand, they look at the brand story and then they start clicking on additional items and then the products get associated with each other. And then all of a sudden they're buying multiple things together. Now, I think we would be very hard pressed to see the buy with it on, on multiple products from my own brand, pretty much across the portfolio. I think we would be very hard pressed to find it. Yeah. Um, so, so it's, it's, that's actually quite <clears throat> difficult to get the trigger to show up. Right. So uh, even my own age of sage smudge kits with a three pack and I have a hundred pack right there is still linking to a competitor's hunter pack right there, which sucks, right? Yeah. Like nobody wants to see that. Um, and let's go to my soaps. My soaps is linking to my competitor. The two of one, of one of my competitors, two products are showing up there, right? Nobody wants to see that. It's gotta be Dr. Squatch, right? Not, not in this case. Uh, this was the, let's click on it. Uh, this is the, uh, ba Bali soap. So, oh. These guys have done pretty good showing the actual soap bars and they went for the horizontal shot and they got 10,000 reviews. So they're doing pretty good for themselves. Yeah. Hey, another quick question going back to bundles. Yeah. Um, so virtual bundles are good because it takes up more space and you get SEO juice out of it, right? 
Correct. If I want to sell like I want to sell a PS4 controller with a PS4 headset. They're independently they're doing okay. We want to make a, a hard bundle of those two items and give a super discount. So now I have to go and get a new UPC and a new EAN, put them together in one box, and then tag the outside of the box. But I also need to create a new title and a new bullets and new main image and new thumbnails. Am I right about that? Yes, but let me ask you this question. Why should you go through that process and do all those things? They they want to move some volume of some 2021 product that's still sitting in their inventory. And they right, right. think so, so forget is going to be the way to go. Yeah, forget what the brand wants to do. <laughs> if you do this, why is it a competitive advantage? Well, I was telling him, do not do this unless you give me ad dollars because nobody's going to find it. So it's a lot of work, right? It is a lot of work. Okay. So you got a new UPC, a new box, a new listing, all the typical setups. Okay. Right. And then you have to go edit the old listings, A plus content, brand story to link to it. Right. But if you do this, why do you benefit? Because nobody else wants to do this. Some do it, but nobody wants to do it. I right? don't want to do it. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, first thing you should do is start charging them a revenue share so that you focus on, on the uh, <laughs> the things that actually drive money. Um, but, but, but in any case, it is a good maneuver. But the question is, on the grand scheme of things, if you, if you wrote down, here's the 100 things I need to do to grow my brand today, which number would it end up? Right. It was going to be very low. Yeah. It's not going to be in the top five. No, not even yeah. remotely close. So yes. if they wanted just to get sales velocity, get rid of that 2021 product, isn't it better just to do a lightning deal, a seven day deal, or just dollars off discount? Yes. The other thing you could do, especially since you're in the technology sector on this brand is create a promo code. Um, uh, Hardly anybody will see it, but the promo code can be automatic when the two things are added together. And then when you add them together on the listing, they will show up in kind of a secluded spot, but associate them together. And, and the other thing you could do is you could create a photo which says, um, you know, purchase with, for best experience, purchase with, um, and here's a promo code to give you a discount, right? So like, I, I think I did this on... <laughs> One of my glass listings, I might be able to find it really quick. Who sees and gets the promo code? I thought it was only a Everybody. social promo code. Yeah, so so social promo codes are actually a better program. Um, it's, it's, it's a better system. It's easier to use. The behind the scenes promo codes. So let me, let me go on the back end here because sure. this is kind of a, a good demonstration. So if we go to, it's been so long since I've set one of these up. Not very often I do them. All right, so I found it. So let me share my screen again. And, and in here, uh, so if you go to the cursor on the top right hamburger menu and go to advertising and go down to promotions. Right. Now, there's a reason Amazon has put this down low, and I don't think it's because of alphabetical, right? I think it's it's literally the worst program they've they've ever made, and it's archaic and it's outdated. And the reason I say that. It's because the horror stories that you hear from people accidentally giving away hundreds of their product in order. Yes. Okay. Because promo codes do what? They stack. They do. <laughs> so be very careful if you do a buy one, get one free, and then later add a coupon because um, they stack. So keep that in mind. All right. So if we were going to create a percentage off or a buy one, get one sort of deal, what you could do is when I buy this item, select the item, and then buyer gets X percent, say 10%, or you can switch this. Uh, sometimes you can switch that to a dollar amount. Yeah. And then apply it to purchased items. Notice how it says additional item. Right. So, so I could do an additional item when they purchase ASIN123, they get an extra dollar off for whatever. So you could have, you could, this is the old, this is the oldest school way 
of doing a virtual bundle and and it's confusing oh, it, it's like when you go to try and replicate this yourself jeff it will take you like 30 minutes to be like did i set that up right and and it's questionable right like so so it's grueling it's difficult notice how many things they add up here and notices and warning signs and dates and stuff there's a reason for all this that happens okay also down here in the claim code you can do single use group code or hit none what none does is it allows you to apply the promo to everybody without them typing it in. Oh, okay. Yeah, which which is what you want in yeah. your specific use case. But most use cases, you wouldn't want to do that. So what if I wanted to limit it so it was one redemption per customer, so they can't just come in and clock me out? Well, you could click that button. However, it's misleading because this button doesn't prevent somebody from ordering 100 units and getting the, cube, the promo code. The coupons are programmed oh. to avoid all of these problems that we just mentioned. They right. never went back and fixed the promo UI. So for those that are just watching and have never set up a promo code, my recommendation to you is don't start. In fact, I'm not even in favor of coupons. I think you should just lower the price of your ASIN and just get larger velocity. Personally, okay. that's, and that's me. I'm a marketer saying that. So if a marketer is saying that, the guy that's biased to always have a coupon up, you know that the way that Amazon's algorithm works, you're probably better off not with a promo or a coupon. So, all right, so that was a pretty good in-depth one, Jeff. Well, thank you and uh, good job on the, uh, the acquisition of Kevin. Kevin's a great guy. He puts on the best digital summit. So uh, yeah. coming up here in February. Uh, Geraldine, why don't we why don't we uh, post a link to the to the sign up for that in the comments and we'll pin that at the top of the YouTube video as well. Jeff, thanks for coming on. We'll see you. Uh, I, I'm going to be, I'm not going to have a show next week as a heads up. So I'll see you in two weeks. All right. Sounds good. All right. We'll see you. Um, all right. So Jeff always asks really great questions. Uh, Jeff runs his own uh, consulting practice and, and it's always fun to see what he's up to. Uh, Robert, you are next. And then we got Curtis in on deck. Uh, Robert, you've been on the show a few times. Good to see you again. Yeah. Welcome. Good to see you. Always like to uh, riff a little bit about some things. I Always uh, and try to when make you it. Say riff, like, you mean complain about Amazon, right? Yeah, no, I don't complain. I, I, I flipped my attitude with Amazon. I don't complain. You understand the process. You, you understand they're running a business. We're running a business. You have to just learn how to navigate it. Otherwise, you just get jaded and you, you know, you're less productive and all and that. And you become jaded. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. How can I help today? Um, so I say I always like hearing you and Jeff also speak because uh, he's uh, – He's a very impressive guy too. Um, but anyway, moving on Good to my people. question. Um, I wanted to, we, we touched on it a couple of weeks ago when I talked about it. I wanted to just talk a little bit about your variation theory because you didn't really get to like spout it too much. But, um, you know, I have a couple brands. They have multiple flavors of the same size product. But we also do multi-packs. And there's the letter of the law, which is Amazon's TOS, what they enforce, and what works to generate better sales and whatnot. Um, what's your take on, well, let's start with an easy softball one. What's your take on leaving listings isolated in general that have a lot of reviews on all of them versus combining flavors? Like why would you combine just some of them? Would you combine all? Would you um, do sort of a sometimes combine and then a few weeks later break them up to see what kind of happens with sales? Like what, what would you, you know, so, so my default parentage theory or variation theory is to parent when in doubt. Gotcha. And, and so here, here's a great case example of why parentage is good. If I come in and I want to buy soap, I know that I want to buy some artisan soap, but I don't necessarily know which scent will tickle my fancy the most. So what am I going to do? I'm going to look at all the scents here and I'm like, oh, I want some of that. I want some of that. And then what happens? I end up adding multiple to my cart and having a good time, right? And so uh, there's an opportunity for that. Now, now there's some debate on whether we should show the soap color or we should show the soap name. Um, I don't have a strong opinion on that. I could go either way. This kind of looks nice though, so we'll probably keep it like that. Um, now, now this these listings, two reviews, just launched it, have hundreds of orders, but but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't separate these out. 
uh, for obvious reasons. They don't have enough reviews. Now, I make a going, suggestion there. You may yeah. consider separating them out between masculine and feminine sense. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, a guy wading through that many color, that many colors without a name was looking for sandalwood or looking for tobacco type smell. I forget what you call it. There's a bunch of you, you know, all the flavors. Um, they just want to get there. Whereas a woman, you know, not to be, nope, they want to, they want to shop. <laughs> they're gonna, sh they're gonna shop around, and they're gonna, they're gonna click on all of them. Um, different, different customer avatar kind of thing, you know. <laughs> so, so funny you say that. I have a macho listing here, so no need to look around. Just buy this box. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right here. <laughs> and and these do quite well, by the way. Uh, okay. So, so great idea on that. You're totally right. I also tried to launch this one as like a kind of a rip on uh, Star Wars. Uh, didn't go too well. So uh, when we relaunched this in the new packaging, we got rid of the galactic take. And I, for I actually forget off the top of my head which direction we went with it. So now I, I got to go track that down and remember, remind myself. Uh, let's see. So these are the single scent listing. I don't know if this is going to go to the parented one with... Yes, it is. Okay, so we we called it good and evil. I switched it to good and evil. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little. I mean, this looks pretty nice. So I like how it yeah. came out. All right, all right. So, um, could when should you um, parent and when should you not? Though that's really the baseline of your question, right? This is the baseline. I was trying to get a little deeper into it. Like, yeah. Let's say the listings have a lot of reviews. When they don't have any reviews, parenting is usually good. Yes. Well, that's just a blanket statement you could say. But let's say every flavor has several hundred or several thousand reviews each. I would, generally, I would generally um, break a parentage when two SKUs have 40% of the sales or more. So if there's two power SKUs, I would, I would ship, I would break it into two parentages. I would not take something like this and delete the parent and leave every one of these variations separated. And the reason I would not do that is because the, the lesser selling SKUs, when they're still parented with a power user, benefit greatly by being connected. Um, the, the, the lesser selling SKUs will die in many instances when you remove them from the parentage. So if, if you go for the isolation strategy, you might kill some of your portfolio. And simplification sometimes is a good maneuver. Don't get me wrong. Um, but, the, but the benefits of separating out two high review products. So if we look at my 12, 13, 1,300 reviews right here, maybe I might benefit from breaking out my three and my six pack, for example, but leaving the 12 and the 100 connected to the three for whatever reason. And, and the theory behind that would be I can show up twice in the search results. So if we type in white sage smudge sticks into Amazon search box here, if I can show up multiple times successfully with two SKUs, I'm better off. When they're parented together, I can only see one of them at a time in the search result. And, of course, typically the one that will show up is the higher ranked one. Uh, and so if if you want two SKUs that can successfully rank, that is in the top 30 or so search results to show up and be side by side. So like this, here's a case example. Mm -hmm. These guys right here have two SKUs, same brand, ranking side by side in search results. That increases their market share substantially. And they have 20,000 reviews and 24,000 reviews. This is the test case for when to separate out. Um, ironically, I think their photo looks better on that one than that one. Um, but here, here they have no parentage on either of these. And this is exactly when I would, I would not parent them this exact situation. A any, any other follow-up on the parentage question? I love talking parentage theory. Not a lot of people out there in content on this topic. That makes sense. So I'm thinking like, let's say, I think I have like four weak flavors and, six uh i'm on board with the showing up in more search results so the idea would be if it's already showing up in the top let's say two pages or top top 30 products don't parent them together otherwise you're giving up market share in general yes but if you have something at the bottom of search results or paid buried in page 12 you can parent that with with a heavy hitter 
And generally really speaking, that should that should give you lift in sales because people will now um, they may even buy both. But now Correct. now that I mean, one gets more visibility. AOV goes up. The the lesser selling unit gets some uh, angel um, pin action, if you will. Pin action is a real estate term. So when you look at one house, you see the other house in the neighborhood. You went there to see one house, but then you see the other one on the way out, right? That's what this does in a parentage theory variation situation. I went to your one product, but then I saw you had two, so I looked at that one too. So, so that pin action is very beneficial. The following statement is the weirdest statement I ever make when I talk about selling on Amazon. On Amazon, you need sales to get sales. And so if you aren't getting very many sales, let's say that secondary product gets 10 units of sales a month, increasing that to 15 through pin action on the parentage can propel that skew to great heights. Getting sales gets more sales. It 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 yeah. spins up the snowball. It's a it's a uh, it's a quandary when you don't know how to get sales. Yes, Once it's a chicken time, or an egg question for sure. Yeah. Once upon a time, I sold grapeseed oil, and I knew nothing about indexing. I I wasted the honeymoon period, and then tried running PPC for keywords that were not even in the listing. <laughs> And guess what happened? I threw away half a pallet of grapeseed oil. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. But fast forward three years later, I realized what I need to do was first put that keyword in there, um, run PPC on it just to get a handful of sales. So it forces more indexing. And then suddenly you get ranked and, you know, it kind of spirals. But I just I had no inkling. I was like, oh, why? It's not even showing up in search results. <laughs> well, one one year when I had to get rid of a pallet of hot sauce bottles, I ended up sending it to all of my clients and I sent four, uh, like a box of four each. And I knew if I put them in at least multiple quantities, they would ship them in a box, which got around my bubble wrap issue because yeah. they would freaking put it in a bubble wrap. Well, um, nowadays, if you do a removal order with small quantities to multiple locations, they will shut down your ability to ship. Into oh yeah. FBA. You don't want to do that. People were do that anymore. That. But <laughs> back in the day, I took advantage of 50 cent ship shipping. Oh, everyone did. Everyone did. There were so many scams around that. That's why people started getting their accounts shut down. But nowadays, yeah. removal orders, almost not even worth it. January 17th, you might as well just dispose of everything. PSA right here, guys. <laughs> shipping costs are going up for removal they're, orders. They're not going up. They're, well, you posted about it too. They're doubling. Yeah, Removal it, orders are doubling to the point they are basically fulfillment fees, if not higher. Ouch. So, Ouch. It is crazy. <laughs> Guys, it's January 12th right now. Go rush in. Get your removal orders done. Before and I don't January understand 17th. that. It's a separate side question. If I put my removal order in today, but it doesn't ship until the 20th, you which get, you fee get are the they old, charging me? The original. The original? The original day. I'm 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 really confident on this, but also I can't guarantee it because Amazon might F you over anyway. Because, because I know I'm sure that between the 12th and the 17th, they're still charging me storage fees though. <laughs> If that's if that's true, then you then the other fee might be generated as well. But I I, <laughs> I know what they've said in the past when they make changes like this. If you if you request the removal, it should go through. I think you could easily win a case with Amazon that you shouldn't have to pay the storage if, if you put the removal order in. No one does storage fee uh, reconciliation on no. Amazon, and no. it's why, why a massively would they taxing thing to do. And I assume because Amazon always gets everything wrong. If you don't take them to the mat about it, they probably are fleecing people tremendously and not oh, intentionally. We, it's just a bad system. <laughs> yeah, we know that's happening. And it's because they don't care about sellers. They care about buyers. They only care about Amazon customers. And and even then, they're kind of being let down this year because Amazon Prime started going to five-day Prime and all this other bull crap. But um, Robert, you always ask thought provoking great. questions and have some good assessments. It was re really great having you on today. Yeah. Please. I'm probably going to join Pope plus. So I will see you there at some point. <laughs> I would, I hope you do, man. My Amazon guy.com slash Pope. We'll see you soon. Also, Thank I you. bought Pope plus.com. So I got that domain too. <laughs> <laughs> Make it easier. Um, Thank we'll you. See you, Robert. Thanks. Um, all right. So our next two guests, we got Curtis and Gustavo on the back end here. we got a few other guests waiting behind the scenes. Curtis, welcome to the My Amazon Guy podcast. And I have no audio for you, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull you back behind the scenes. We'll come back to you, so see if you can troubleshoot your audio. Gustavo, uh, no 
webcam there. Maybe you, okay, you're on. You got two different ones. All right. Can we hear you? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, Hi, perfect. Racing from Argentina. Welcome. Hello in Argentina. How's the weather down there? It's uh, really hot. 31 degrees. All right. Uh, it's about to get really windy, and power might go out where I'm living here in the Atlanta area. So uh -huh. uh, we'll see how that goes. But how can I help? How, how is Amazon going for you? Well, uh, we're about to launch a new product, but um, I'd like to know or what do you recommend in order to protect the product? Because um, we think that uh, it has some features that are um, creative and, uh, well, we, we, we have been uh, in the market and, and, and see how uh, different Chinese factors can copy it immediately. So are you, are you selling a new product that would be patentable? Yeah. Okay. yeah. But you... at, at the, sorry, Steve, at the beginning, we need to try to test it if it, it, it has a, a chance to be profitable or, or successful. But uh, at the same time, we have some doubts if we should patent it or not. And uh, well, we don't know what to do. Okay, so let me let's probe a little bit. Um, so, so just to give me some perspective. What are your what are your typical monthly sales on Amazon, if I can ask? Uh, well, it's around uh, ten thousand. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you got some experience under your belt, and you're now looking to go scale. Does that sound about mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. All right. How many launches have you done? No, this is our third launch. Okay. So third launch. Um, so now you're like, I really want to just go all out, right? And you're mm -hmm. and you're worried about Chinese ripoffs. Okay. Yeah. So, so on, um, that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If even if you had a patentable product, it would cost you twenty thousand dollars to in, uh, protect the patent yeah. minimum. Mm -hmm. So, so don't worry about it. Let them rip you off. Mm -hmm. Focus on being a marketer. And just try and go get sales and mm -hmm. assume that at some point the Chinese will rip you off. There's nothing you can do to prevent this. Wow. Um, now, because we are, we are investing a lot of time and trying to find uh, things or, or yeah, uh, topics to differentiate it. But at the end of the day, we are trying to avoid, avoid that risk. So it, I mean, there is a risk. That's true, um, but but like if if financing is a problem and you're worried about like overbuying and then not being able to sell inventory, uh -huh. uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Here's why: if your product takes off, you're going to sell out. Uh -huh. Okay, and if the product doesn't take out, take off, nobody's going to rip you off. I understand. So you're going to have success. Or you're not, uh -huh. and it's and it's going to have nothing to do with the Chinese ripoffs, at least in the first six months. Okay. Now, a year from now, let's say that you launch the product, you're selling a hundred thousand dollars in sales a month. At that point, I'd be like, yeah, maybe you should go get that patent. Okay. But okay. until then, don't even worry about it. Just just launch your product. Uh -huh. It's better to launch, get sales, and build your portfolio. Okay. Okay, Stephen. It's a scary thing. Now, now for coming on the show today, um, I'm going to give you a, a promo code for our, our Mag School course on launching courses. Uh, uh -huh. So, Gustavo, all I need you to do is send me an email to podcast at myamazonguy.com, and I'll send this over to you today. So, we have a lot of different courses ranging from SEO, PPC, design, and everything in between, um, even how to build premium A-plus content. Launching on international. Uh, by the way, Kevin Sanderson from Maximize E-Commerce, he wrote that one. Uh -huh. And... This is the course I want to give to you for free uh, for coming on the show today, Gustavo. So, okay. so this course, take that. It's got some additional tips to make sure you take advantage of the honeymoon period. Uh, and I'll put a link to this in the chat as well for everybody uh, so you guys can see that. Uh, you guys should check that out. Only uh, $20 if you're watching this today. Thank Gustavo, you. 
good luck on the on the product launch, my friend. Thank you. Let me know how it It was a pleasure. My pleasure too. We'll see you. Um, all right, let's go back to uh, Curtis. How's the audio now? Still, still can't hear you. All right, keep working on that. We'll come back. Don't worry, don't worry, Curtis. We'll we'll get to you eventually. Uh, all right, so let's look at the list here. Uh, I think Rolando is next. Hey, uh, can hey. you hear me? Uh, dude, not only can I hear you, I'm jealous. Like your setup is amazing. Like, <laughs> oh man, that's that's a great compliment coming from I think the man when it comes to Amazon things. So thank well, you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Now I think I, the thing that I've always been frustrated by is my my arm bar here. This looks yeah. this looks weird. Okay, so so you, so I had the one you had. Yeah. Go get go on Amazon. Go get. I think it's called the Gator. The gator? And you can kind of yeah yeah and it's and it's nicer. I put a little nice little sexy wrap on it with our logo, so it so it you know if I'm on podcast or anything else, you know. It All right, so shows gator, uh, Mike Holder, something, Mike yeah, yeah, something like that. There yeah. you go. There it is, right with the uh, sponsored brand right at the top. So go click this. Yeah, there you go. Okay, let's take a look at this. You got you got my you, you're picking my ears up because I I need to get one of these. <laughs> All right, there's two. There's so much product overwhelming. The 129. Uh, this one right here. There you go. Okay, and I'm looking. I'm comparing to my current one, so I'll give everybody a little, like, okay. So here's my, here's my arm bar right here, and I and I like to put it next to my yeah. desk there. Um, so you think that this will? Oh man, sleeker. You could get it out of the way, even if you don't put a nice little wrap on it. You just look at it. Look at that versus that that two little metal thing that i mean i was using what you have on your desk where, i actually have it if have i were to been? where have you been in my life Rolando? <laughs> this while we're on the podcast right now I, so i you. have been watching and consuming everything you're putting out so i've been there but just behind the scenes every now and then i drop a comment in the youtube stuff or on linkedin but i've been waiting to get here where i i i'm able to talk to you live uh, I just purchased the mic. Thank you for that recommendation. I owe you, sir. All no right. problem. You've no, just no, you, been get, you've just been laying on the compliments. So you must have a really difficult question, and you've been waiting so long, and now you are here. So. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. So the first question that I've got for you, you know, if you when you're on Amazon, they send you these um, notifications. One of the notifications that we get from them is um, – your feature offer price is not at the price that we want. It's something to that effect, right? Okay. So they, they give you your price, and then they say the competitive price below. So, for example, our product will sell for $250. They'll say the competitive price mm -hmm. is 200 Now, our price includes an all-in price with a bunch of accessories, but they're comparing us to some Joe Schmo that doesn't include all that. So my question are you, is... Are you selling uh, a retail product that's in stores? Uh, a version of it, yes, maybe in, in retail. That is correct. All right. The UPC code that you're using, have you looked mm -hmm. it up on Google to see where else it's being sold? Uh, I have not, but we what we do is we use our own um, using uh, we use our own UPC code that we've gotten through uh, one of those agencies, the one that Amazon wants you to use now. So that's what we use as a UPC code UPC code on the product. So it's not the same UPC code. Got it. And that makes sense. I would still Google it, though, just in case, because okay. if it if it showed up on Walmart, for example, and it was a lower price, it would cause what you're describing. Mm -hmm. um, OK, OK. Um, I, I don't. Expect and we are that. on Walmart, by the way. So yeah. I can check with um, my team about what we're pricing that on Walmart. So, for example, if some schmuck was selling your item on Walmart for 200 and you want mm -hmm. to sell it for 250 on Amazon, yeah. And they hijacked your Walmart listing that can cause your current situation. Got it. Yeah. I'm going to I'll check with them on that. So that's an easy check. It's yep. you're probably going to rule that out in 30 seconds. And it's not that. OK, um, here's a couple more things to look at. One of the things I'm about to tell you is kind of scary. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm buckled in. Uh, this is probably rare and is probably not going to be your situation. But I have personally witnessed when an Amazon catalog member has forcefully put the the retail price lock on a listing mm. with no rhyme or reason, mm. and and 
Well, there is there is kind of a rhyme or reason. In fact, uh, it's it's that Amazon was cheating the system to make that their own item in the category sell. So the category uh, vendor manager mm-hmm. can go in and muck with people's listings to make their product sell better. Wow. So this is this is wow. classic corruption wow. monopoly situation. Now, now I've, I've witnessed this personally on two occasions, and the reason I know this happened is because we we found legitimate proof in talking to other people at Amazon who saw the lockdown. Mm. And and so we put it together. And then um, we were able to get this resolved by emailing Jeff at Amazon.com and and making the case. So so what I recommend you do is file tickets, tell them there's no reason for this to be on there and make the case. And of course, you know what's going to (laughs) happen. Right. They're going to say, sorry, can't help you. Or here's the copy, yeah, and, paste, yep, copy and paste response. Right? Random response. No problem. Respond to that two, three times. I need an escalated manager to look at this. I believe Amazon is, has, it, it, I believe a corrupt member at Amazon is locking my <laughs> listing down. Make up some claim, whether it's yep. true or not. Okay. The reason you do that is to get an escalated manager to view the situation. You need, you need information from Amazon on what's causing it. Right. And you need them to remove it. And generally in that order. Okay. You can't get it removed until you know what's causing it. Yeah. So you're, yeah. so you're gonna try and find out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now now and then then once you've done those tickets, uh, Amazon is a culture of escalation. So you're gonna then send an email to Jeff at Amazon.com, give him the okay. case ID. Of course, Jeff doesn't read these. Um, so, <laughs> He's so, not even in the organization anymore. Yeah, it's a it's an executive seller relations team. Uh-huh. And uh, and you can even address the email that way. Dear seller executive relations, um, here's my situation. I'm, I'm being screwed over as briefly as possible. Here's the case ID. Here's the resolution I need, right? Okay. I need Amazon to do X. Here's why you should help me. Okay. Brevity is your best friend. Okay. okay. I'll ch- and- get chat GPT to write a good one for me then. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for all the sleepers out there that don't get the chat reference, <laughs> um, let, let me tell you this, uh, if <laughs> the power behind that AI is massive Absolutely. And, and it is, it is going to revolutionize how copy is written in the world. And are you aware of what they just announced this week? They're going to up the parameters on it to over a trillion. Isn't that amazing? Over, I think it's a, a hundred. I, I don't know if I saw this right, but I know it was over a trillion. I couldn't remember if it was a hundred or one trillion. One of those two, but it's a massive yeah. well, amount of new parameters. Whatever the number is, massive, right? It's massive. So uh, we've been testing it out at, at my Amazon guy, and we're very excited about it, right? Error reduction. It sounds like it's written very well. It doesn't sound like a robot in most instances. Uh, and, and it's going to help those if you've got folks, which I know you probably have folks from around the world that English is their second or maybe third language. It helps clean up the communication much better as well. Correct. And, and so it's going to be pilotable um, by a virtual assistant with your rules. Like if you create a rule set, like here's how I want my copy, make this tone of voice, use this keyword list, give it to mm-hmm. the virtual assistant. They go play with the chat bot. They come back in an hour and they have copy for you. Right. Right. Like, right. Like, and at scale. And so. Uh, it's it's a revolutionary change, and everybody needs to be paying attention to this. It's going to affect everybody. Everybody. It's going to affect people that sell on Amazon. It's going to affect mm-hmm. copywriters. It's going to affect marketers. It is going to affect everything. Basically, within 10 years from now, I'm going to make a prediction. <laughs> All copy in marketing will be written by robots. And that's a pretty safe prediction. It's probably going to come true much sooner than that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And um one thing that we're planning on doing with that is to take the, the, the results that it spits out and actually do a little bit of A-B testing behind the scenes to see if the SEO gets it right on the Amazon side or if it's comparable to human stuff. So we really have a good comparison on like, wow, Chad GPT, which internally we're calling him Eddie. We gave him a name. We call him <laughs> you Eddie. called him Eddie, all right. We're calling him Eddie. <laughs> Eddie, if Eddie is actually doing better on the SEO, which is all we're after on, on the bullets and description, versus our human team that's putting that together. I'll, I'll just say this. This is going to be delicate, but it's the truth, and everybody needs to hear it. If, 
if you are if you have a grandkid, a, a child, or a neighbor that is going to school to be a copywriter, you need to tell them to switch careers right now. <laughs> And, yeah. and it, they like there, I, I Googled it the other day. There's 117,000 copywriter jobs in the United States. I believe within two years, that number will be less than 5,000. Mm -hmm. uh, so you guys got to pay attention that this is a technology shift that is seismic, major, seismic yeah, major. shift. Uh, and, it, and, and anybody that's tech savvy is the winner here. If you're tech savvy enough to operate this and you can't write copy for whatever reason, but you're tech savvy and you can rotate through a chat bot, it's going to change everything. All right. So we really hit that home. Um, back to your current problem. Yes. I, I believe what I've told you is the best solution. Mm -hmm. um, but but you're going to you, you may want to have like a two track solution here where you ticket to request information and do call ins. I would recommend that you do a call in on a Saturday or a Sunday. Yeah, I've heard about that on the Costa Rica side. They're better than, you know, the Indian team that animals it. They, they are. Um, and you also have a more likely time to get a, get in touch with an American on the weekend. Um, mm. And you just need to you need to probe and ask questions and say, hey, okay. I got a situation. Can you look at this now? Um, Jeff Allen, uh, who was on the show earlier, has has a meme that he's been doing every Sunday. He takes a picture of his face where he's like this <laughs> uh, on LinkedIn. And so. So like it, it is literally that's it's suffering to, to make this support um, and you'll sit on there for 20 minutes and you have a one out of five shot that they'll even know how to help you. Right. But, but in your situation, it, it is destroying your product opportunity. So, so oh, that's yeah. what I'd recommend. The other thing yeah. I would say is how many reviews are on this listing? Um, easily a hundred or more. Okay. So, so enough where you don't just want to make a new listing and throw it out. No, 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 no. We've, okay. we've gotten really good traction on this listing. So I do not want to abandon it. Okay. And then the buy box is gone, correct? Yep. It so says C, C buying options, which is what's showing how, right now. How many orders are happening while that buy box is gone? Mm, it's a drop. Uh, I would say probably a 40% drop since okay. so, that's happening. So so you have more than 50 orders that have happened since the buy box loss. Is that? Yeah. So, oh yeah. Easily. So this easily. is, this leads me to believe uh, that there is a manual mechanism on this listing, because if it was an automatic mechanism after about 20 orders and definitely by 50, it would have allowed the buy box to be regained from my experience. Mm. I, see. I typically see so so like if if for example I was selling this beer glass uh, for five dollars and I raised the price to twenty five dollars within fifteen minutes there's a high probability Amazon will remove the buy box but if right. I got another twenty right. orders at twenty five dollars they would give me it back typically I see so so I think I think there is a manual intervention on your listing. And we can't even run the PPC on it, which we were, because it box. says the, it's so it's a conundrum. Like, okay, you're gonna lock me out from the, featuring it. Maybe I'll throw some PPC to unlock it, but you can't because they won't see the price. So, so your solution here is to be as noisy as possible, <laughs> and okay. to send an email to Jeff at Amazon after you've gone through the regular routine system and have failed to resolve it. All right, okay. we'll do. Hey, I want to probe your brain on something. Search query reports. Oh, They're my still fa fairly new. I've seen you um, talk about them. But what I want to know is, how do I double down on what I'm seeing? You know, Amazon ranks the words, you know, from one through a thousand. And there's some words there that are more like long. Um, I wouldn't, not, not long tail. They're more uh, generic. Some are a little broader. Um, and what I want to do is really like throw gasoline on the appropriate ones so that we can like take our, our listings even higher. What strategy are you using to double or triple down on the right words that you're seeing? Yeah. Right on the screen. So this is the search query performance report. For those that don't know about this, you can go by clicking on brands, brand analytics, and that'll take you here. They recently released an ASIN view. So you can go down to the ASIN level now. And they also recently released a download button. So you can now get an Excel file, which is really cool. Okay. Um, so here's what I would do. Do you see this column right here where it says score. the score? Mm -hmm. I would just literally focus on the top scores. 
Okay. I am so confident that Amazon got this data correct, which is weird and strange mm -hmm. and unusual, that if you focus on these words that are towards the top, okay. especially if you do it down to the ASIN level, you will see tremendous results. As mm -hmm. one example, here's the case study that I use. Sage candles for cleansing house. Within seven, by the way, it, my product is not a candle. So if we go over to amazon.com, age of sage, and we click on this product right here, this product is a smudge stick. But right. what I noticed in the data was, is that my, my click percentage was three times higher than my impression share. So I knew that people were more interested in my product than the candle. So I changed the title, I added the words to the listing, and I increased my ad spend, and I tripled my market share. So when you talk about steroids, yeah, we'll pay that's attention. what I'm looking for. The words that you don't think matter actually do. Here's proof. Okay. Gotcha. Right? You need to put these. So, so I, I got a really great case example for this. And let's see if I've got uh, the product. I had this looked at it earlier today. Had it up somewhere. All right, let's just relook it up. So we're going to go to Amazon.com, and we're going to go to this Happy Me journal right here. Okay. So I want you to look at the images between image one and two. So you're looking. Okay. This is the original image right here. What do you notice between that image and this new one? Just shout out whatever you first see. Uh, they, that there's more. I guess the pages are. You could see what's in the pages and you also see inside of it. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, the age range. We got a nice starburst for the age. Anything else? Um, the the wrap looks different. On uh, one says kids Tell me journal. More. Why did why is the wrap different? What's the biggest call out? Uh, there is it's for kids, right? So so if I was looking at this journal and I was shopping, why would I buy this journal? First thing that comes to your head. What maybe the color and you're going to be happy. That's it. Know. That is the only reason this main image would generate a sale. If I wanted a yellow journal, I would buy this product. Right. That's it. Okay. Rolando is just like nailing every question here, by the way, guys. He came on my show to ask me questions, and here I am <laughs> giving him. Uh, but, but, but the point is, is that this was so obvious that any random person off the street could get these questions correct, is my point. Right. Mm -hmm. okay? And so the way that I figured out how to do this, this is my friend's listing, by the way. Okay. I told him, I said, we're going to go into your brain analytics report, and whatever we find in the top 10 keywords, we're going to pick one, and we're going to... We're going to put it in your main image. Uh, but we did one better than that. We, we picked two. The age six and 12 journal was also in the top 10 on the, on the brand analytics. And it said mm -hmm. kids journal. I said, nobody knows that this is a kid's journal when it looks like this. No, um, the, no. the only thing you didn't uh, call out, by the way, was the size of the product. And, and his pixels were smaller than 2000 by 2000 and were not uh, cropped correctly. This is the thing that most people subtly miss. So the main okay. image, uh, and, and it had nothing to do with brand analytics anyway. But yeah. the, the point is, this is the number one hack on Amazon. You want to grow your sales today. You want to increase your market share. Look at your main image and, and spend hours reworking this. Run A-B tests. By the way, I ran an A-B test between these two images. What do you think the outcome of the score was? Oh, probably two to one. Two to one is all? You think 66 to 33? Yeah. Try 97%. 97 percent oh, oh, that's image. significant that's hugely significant 97 percent um so i did some i did some free work for my friend which is why i get to use this example and uh he's now making thousands of more dollars nice sales. and nice. his market share is now up on the term and he is really happy now if you go back to the brain analytics tab all right so i'm going to go off screen for a second just because i'm not sure if i have the tab back up uh, okay. And going back over here, back over to brand analytics. So if I pick a word now, obviously I can't do Dr. Squash. So like right. if I do that, I'm going to get a trademark takedown yesterday. Right. But if we look in this list here and we see a call out Lord of the Rings merchandise. Interesting. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Well, if we go to my products and we go to my age of sage store, I'm pushing Lord of the Rings right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was number eight on my entire brand. Interesting. Okay. On the entire brand. And we go here and we do a control F. Well, earlier today, I happened to have made some edits to my listing to get an exact match Lord of the Rings merchandise. Okay. And not only did I put it in my bullet points, I stuffed it in my premium A plus content okay. as a header. 
Twice. Cool. Twice. Okay. So repeat, repeat, repeat the uh, the the winning keyword or phrase. Yes, this is part of SEO phase four that we do. And for anybody that wants to replicate this, you can go over to myamazonguy.com slash SEO. And we give out phase one as a free guide to anybody that wants it. And as you scroll down, you'll see my, my full masterclass. By the way, this is uh, for 90% of people I talk to, this ranks number one on, on YouTube for the term Amazon SEO. So if that happens for you, everybody go try this right now. Do you guys go to youtube.com and type in Amazon SEO? If you see my video, Post in the chat what rank it is. And, and by the way, go ahead and click on it. Because if you click on it, then give it a thumbs up and a comment while you're at it. Give it a comment while you're at it. And you'll help me. And, and right on that video, Amazon SEO. And you'll help me rank number one for SEO on this on this term. Now, if, if I'm clever enough to rank a video on YouTube for the term Amazon SEO and rank it number one, maybe I might know something about Amazon SEO, right? So, I love the hard pose. I love the... Gary, it's, Gary, it's a Gary, it's a Gary V post. <laughs> um, I went and did a photo shoot. And uh, so, so I was on my podcasting journey early on. And since we talked about mics, we're going to talk about podcasting for a second. Yeah. Um, and, and I learned early on uh, from a, from a YouTube coach who told me the most important thing you can do for your videos is to have dang good thumbnails. And I was oh, like, absolutely. I was like, okay, what do I need to do to make a good thumbnail? And he said, Make sure that it's clickbaity. Okay, sure, saw that one. Yep. Come. And go do a photo shoot and get a thousand overly exaggerated poses of your face close up. That sounds like a Mr. Beast, like taking out of his playbook. Yes. That's exactly what he does. Yes, and and so uh, having said that, I am one of the most introverted people in the world. Where so can't tell oh, okay so i don't actually read people's faces or emotions so guess what i had to do i had to go on google and google all of the emotions that you can do <laughs> and i had to practice my facial expressions well as it turns out oh <laughs> that shot that i just did there that works <laughs> that works we ran data uh and we figured out which poses did the most clicks <laughs> and and the serious pose and me, open eyes, open the, eyes. The open YouTube eyes. face. That's the YouTube face. YouTube face gets the most <laughs> clicks. And I <laughs> hate the fact that I have to spend time doing this. But Looking. because I now understand the science, I'm really good at it. And, and so if, you, if anybody listening to this wants to have um, more clicks on your YouTube videos, I just gave you a, a, a two-minute hack. Focus on your thumbnails. And, and make sure you also um, Google this. You need to Google the color mismatching guide. If you can't read the text, if you put blue on red, this is actually a really great tip for Amazon sellers too. If yeah, I, 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 I just gave this tip to somebody else the other day. If you have text that's not readable on the front page of Amazon on your packaging, redo it. Just like we did today uh, with the Happy Me Journal, uh, and, and by the way, Diaz says, uh, you're number three on Google in the video section for keyword Amazon SEO. That's great. Yeah. So I need to rank it. I need to get that one to one too, as well. Uh, so we're, we're coming up on that. Uh, can I do YouTube ads for you? Uh, we, we could technically, uh, but most of the, uh, focus is on my ecosystem is, is Amazon services. Um, all right. All right. So I'm, I'm meandering, but Rolando really got me revved up today and I'm super excited. To talk. No, I, look, you do a lot for a lot of people and I'm glad I pumped you up. I, any, any way that I can encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. I remember you got some trolls when you started this whole jump on Amazon thing. It, I was well, like, I think well, you're man. punking us. That's what I thought. You were punking us with what's going on. That was my first in, in reaction, but I know it was so far out from what you do. I'm like, he, he can't, after a while, like, he's not punking us with what's going on. Yeah. Like, I cannot believe what happened happened. And, and we will not <laughs> reference what happened. happened. Uh, it was embarrassing. And I was ashamed. And I cannot believe that happened. So that video has been, del that video has been edited out. So nobody can figure out what happened. But let's, let's put it this way, I give, a, I, I try and give service to the community. And there are a few people out there who are trolls. <laughs> Uh, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't avoid it. I would just want to leave you with this because I know you got other I, people. I can't I, avoid I, it. I, sw I switched to StreamYard and figured out a new system so it'll never happen again. But go awesome. ahead. Awesome. Awesome. I was just going to say, look, we've been experimenting with day parting um, the last six or eight weeks. 
And we did an analysis where we looked at all of our orders. And it turns out we get only like 5% of our orders on the weekend. And people have been saying forever, people browse on Sunday and they buy on Monday. Baloney. The evidence doesn't support that. Not in our case. And we, we do about 5,000 orders a month. And so... Go, keep going. And then I was going to say, since we moved over to day parting and then looked at the overall business, when we get orders, they tend to like coalesce between the business hours. And then we then broke that down by SKU. We found some, some, uh, some on some SKUs that are um, more like business oriented and higher priced on, by like Friday, no orders. And then if you go back in during the summer months, it's even like very clear, like people are leaving the office by three o'clock because no orders are coming in past 3 yes. p.m. So we've shifted our PPC to kind of mirror those patterns. We have not seen this drop off in tacos. Um, so far, about six weeks into this, we, it's the ads tend to be more efficient, the ones that we have day parted. What we kind didn't of improvement have you seen? I'm curious. ROAS, huge improvement in ROAS. Um, we are not spending any more. And so the, the, the theory right now is- The dollars are going we farther. Can, what's that? So the dollars are going farther. The dollars are going farther. Now, so and if the eyeballs really are on our listings in the office hours, why not focus all the firepower on that rather than chasing something at 2 a.m., 4 a.m., or on the weekend at 3 p.m. when nobody's watching or nobody's really been buying historically? Okay. Everything you just said is logical. Um, the experience that Rolando just shared may not be replicatable for everybody who's listening. And I just, I just, I'll just put that out. Yeah. Now, if you have a different product, ours is mostly office, right? Yeah. In the office type so for of things. You, it makes a hundred percent sense. Yeah. Like, I, I, I would be surprised if you had any different results than what you did. Based now, on if we sold said. supplements, it would be, you know, probably a lot on the weekend at nights when people are after work or something like that. But yeah, that's not our category. Um, and by and large, um, category agnostic for a moment with this next comment I'm about to make. Sundays are generally the best day, followed by Monday, and then it goes Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And Friday and Saturday are generally the weakest days. So what Rolando shared was is that he also has a little bit of weakness on, on Sunday. But but Monday, man, you must be busting through a bunch. Right. I just got back to the office Holy crap! This thing's broken. I can't do it. I can't do my job. If I if I don't get this done, my boss is gonna kill me. And Monday is like your power day, is it not? Monday th actually even better. So if so anybody that's in the office space or sell anything there, Monday through Wednesday, it things tend to be front loaded, and a little bit drop off on Thursday, nice a little percent. bit drop off on Friday, and then much weaker Saturday and Sunday. So I can tell you run a sophisticated shop. I can also tell you understand your customer avatar. Um, have you seen my video on where I ask uh, who is the target audience for a third three uh, for a uh, sorry, I almost gave it away uh, for somebody that would buy a Russian mail order bride? It's a weird question. Have you seen that video? OK, I haven't seen that video, but it's All a right. great question. Love to know. So I want you to try and answer it to your best of your ability. Who do you think and go as specific as possible would purchase a Russian mail order bride? And I probably need to switch. Not a female. So that we rule out females, right? Okay. That's the easy part. Um, it's going to be, so I don't know, older white guys. Okay. All right. Now tell me, as, tell me the most specific thing you possibly could. Um, probably an older, uh, maybe have had kids divorced, um, higher income. Um, uh, probably you maybe find some regional differences, geography within the U.S. for that, um, so that you may find some more clustered in certain uh, regions of the country than, you know, let's say maybe the Midwest or in the South. Mm -hmm. So so the reason I love this question, and I, and I knew you were going get to it, get it, uh, and by the way, the, the best-in-class answer is three-time divorced truck drivers. <laughs> love it. <laughs> right. That's as specific well, as it gets. You know, without fail, that every three time divorced truck driver would probably look at that magazine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why? For sure. like, like you laughed because it was it made it made perfect sense on the yeah. second I said it. Right. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they have high most likely have hygiene issues. They're traveling. They don't have time to invest in a relationship. They just need company and they want it yesterday. And they've been yeah. around. They've tried the dating and, and they may they may not necessarily be the most aesthetically pleasing 
presentation because they're on the road all the time and they became a truck driver because they didn't want to talk to anybody. And they're probably super introverted like me. Right. <laughs> so my uncle's a truck driver. I love truck drivers. My point is Rolando did a really good job of understanding his customer avatar and he has focused his advertising close to home to his customer avatar. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need to do as an Amazon seller is focus in on your customer avatar. So, all right, we spent a lot of time. I felt like this was a great segment, Rolando. Thank you for coming on the My Amazon Guy podcast. No, thank you very much. I'm going to step out, watch the rest, because I learn when you ask or these other folks come in and ask questions. And as always, I'm a fan of, of what you do and uh, keep doing the good work, man. I, I, I like when I meet, uh, I'll call you a fan. Um, and I like when I meet a fan who's been a fan, but I didn't know they were until today. And it's, <laughs> you know, it's great. We'll see you Thank later. You, Steven. You all much. right. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Um, all right. So thanks for the guests that have been waiting patiently behind the scenes. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the chat real quick and then I'm going to go to our last couple of guests. So we had a couple of people put in uh, some, some perch, uh, some donations. So I want to give them a little bit of uh, quick limelight. So Michael says, what is the gentle way of letting unauthorized sellers know to get off my listing? And the answer is go into the Amazon contact seller button and politely tell them that you're reporting them to Amazon. But if they remove their listing prior to the report going through, that it won't affect their account. And then if that doesn't work, buy their product and file a complaint as a customer that they're selling um, a, high, uh, a, a counterfeit and report them at amazon.com slash contact from the buyer account. And those I think have been the fastest ways to take care of this. The other hack that I will give you in particular, uh, Michael, is you should, you should put onto the listing in the main image. I'm going to show you my product real quick. Uh, you need to put a picture of your brand into the main image. So this product right here, I, I had a lot of unauthorized sellers because this is a commodity item. Technically, anybody can source smudge sticks. But what they can't source is my nice white box, which costs more than the smudge sticks. And so if, if they don't have that box, they don't, they don't have the same item. So this is how I solved it. It's by putting it into the main image. This is the best hack I can give you, Michael. Make sure you put the brand name straight into the main image and then contact them uh, just like we talked about there. Uh, great question there. We got a, at least one more donation from Pepe. Thanks for the super sticker. Uh, I see a couple of questions from you today. Hi, Steven, your biggest camera shy fan. I know we're going to get you on camera one of these days. Uh, I still have the 8572 error on my oldest SKU, which came completely out of nowhere. Not sure why. Uh, first tip, download a CLR report for your catalog. Look at the listing on the, on the Excel file and see if there is anything unusual there. The first thing that I would look at is whether the UPC field is filled in. And if it's not, that's probably your problem. So here you can see error code 8572, cause when you try to create products already listed on Amazon with specific product IDs. So uh, make sure that the UPC is filled in correctly on the back end. That's the tip I'm gonna give you today, uh, Pay Pay. So great question. Uh, we'll give you one more here and then we're gonna go back to our on-air guests. How do I change campaign names in mass via Excel file uploads? Um, that's a really good question. I don't know if I have a video on that yet. Geraldine, let's send a request over to our PPC team to shoot a video on how to do this. And we'll we'll, we'll post that on our channel uh, probably next week. Uh, so it is definitely doable, probably not difficult. May need a little bit of concatenation on the Excel files, but we'll, we'll get a video shot so you know how to do that. All right. Uh, so going back to the chats, uh, and I've lost my, I've lost my order. So I don't know who, uh, Fahad, I'm going to go with you next. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hi, thank you for having me back. How can I help you today? And it is good to see you again. Likewise. Um, so one of my products, I, I launched it about four or five months ago. It's been steadily increasing, um, its BSR ranking. Um, I've noticed uh, this week it was an average of top 80 uh, in the country. So I'm from the UK. Um, yep. But at the moment it's top 25. So it's been going up. Mm -hmm. I've been playing with my PPC 
Um, I've been adjusting the bids. I've got a really good auto campaign going at the moment where the the settings is up and down, uh, but the bid is low, uh, which means I can get more clicks. Um, so it doesn't matter how high or low the conversion is because it's not costing a lot. So I think it's a combination of those changes I made that helped with uh, getting more sales. So what I want to know is if I want to increase my prices but maintain the BSR ranking, um, is there something more I need to do or is there something different I need to do with my PPC campaign uh, the moment I put my prices up? So first of all, congratulations on having such a high ranking product on Amazon. That's fantastic. Um, now, if you want to increase your price, I almost guarantee the BSR is going to soften. So the question is, by how much? And margins in 2023 are rough. So of course, you want to get that taken care of as quickly as possible, right? Yep. So uh, what's the current price of the item? Uh, it's very cheap. It's eight pounds, equivalent to $10. Okay. Okay. So there's, there's a psychological barrier at the 10s, the 20s, and the 50s, okay? Mm -hmm. So my prediction is, is if you go from 8 pounds to 9 pounds, you probably will see no difference as if you'd gone from 8 pounds to 9.99. Okay. My, that's my prediction. Having said that, if I were in your shoes, I would raise it probably half a pound for one week, another half pound for a week, and continue to do that and and see what happens. Okay, um, I'm I'm guessing because it used to be a pound more expensive, but now uh, I've got the strike through showing it's like a ten percent discount. If I put put it up by fifty pence or one pound, the discount will be lower, if not completely gone. Do you think that will have an impact on the BSR if there's no strike through discount? If you increase the list price field and then have a sale at that list price and then lower the price down, you will regain that field. So okay. if you raise to 10 pounds, get 10 sales, then lower it down to nine pounds and then and have the list price at 10 pounds, I predict the list price field will show up. And that's after a week, did you say? It, it's inconclusive on how quickly, um, and it may not need, you may not need to do it for a week, uh, but but you need some orders at the higher price. So it, it's going to depend proportionally. But well, but in, even, in either case, will it? Do you think it will affect the, the BSR if there's no strike through discount in the in the short term? Hard to say. I think so. Yes, but by how much? Nobody's going to be able to predict. Now. I, let me ask you this question. Is raising the price inevitable? Well, yes, yes. Inflation means I have then, to put the price up. All right. So with, with that in mind, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> right? right. So like all of the calculus that we're trying to do right now, at the end of the day, you still have to raise the price. Mm. So, so the question is just how and how quickly. My recommendation is raise it by a half a pound and see what happens then raise it by another half pound and see what happens. And just be cautious on how quickly you do it. Now, you don't have to wait a week. You, you could. You could do it for three days and raise it another half pound after three days or three hours. It just, it just depends how much data you're comfortable with. But what's your target price? Where do you want to end up? Um, so my my competition, they're, they're doing really good. Uh, I think they're ranked one or two, and, and they sell at 20 pounds. Um, so are they the, uh, selling the same so, item? Uh, they, they are. So with my item, it depends on. It's, it's like a, it's, it's a harness for for pets or for yeah. dogs specifically. So it depends on because with my one, I'm selling really uh, sp small size harnesses. I've noticed that there are a lot more dog owners with particularly small dogs, and even if there isn't. There's a lot of dog owners that might have puppies where at the beginning they need a smaller size harness for, for, for a few weeks or a few months. So, so let me um, ask you this. Do, do people love dogs? Yes. Yes, obviously, right? Yeah. And yeah. when you love something or someone, can you put a price on that? Uh, no. Generally speaking, no. <laughs> no. So, so the question is, 
can you raise the price from eight pounds to 10, maybe even to 15 to 20? The answer is, oh, yeah, you absolutely can. Because I always feel like Amazon punishes me when I put my prices. I've done this before with my do. other products. I put it up by a little bit. Next thing you know, BSR's dropped. They do, they do punish dropped, it. Conversions dropped. Yeah. Yes. But why do they punish it? Because the customer punishes it, right? And so the conversion rate does drop down. It happens. So what I recommend you do is you got to raise the price. It's just a question by how much and, and how quickly, right? On the listing, talk about quality. Why this harness is the last harness you'll need to buy for your loved puppy, right? Make mm. sure that there is puppies in every photo, right? Mm. Sell them the experience. And if you sell the experience, when you raise the price, you won't see as big of an impact. You still will, but it won't be as bad. Um, a quick question. Do you happen to know, I know that the... Um, the click-through rate is usually like, what, half a percent uh, for a typical PPC um, campaign. But for a video uh, video ad campaign, are those metrics slightly different? Because I'm getting a much higher click-through rate, but that's partly because my impressions are, are much lower. So, so the question is on video versus sponsored products or, or, or help me out. Yeah, so um, is there a... Is there an expected click-through rate for video ads versus like a search term ads? There, there is. Uh, video ads have a higher CTR, typically as much okay, as one so percent in some instances. Then. Yeah. So, okay. like a sponsored product average across categories, 0.33 is pretty typical, yep. Um, yep. and video is typically double, if not triple. Um, it's even better though if you have the dog. Have the have the harness in their mouth walk on the screen. Try that out. <laughs> All right. Yeah, All I, right. I, I asked because um, uh, my my click through rate is probably you know between averaging four to five percent. I I'm assuming that's quite high. So it's very if that's high. the case. I spend might more. need to spend more. Yeah, I don't I don't care yes. too much about. Uh, also, your price is for. your price is really low, which is why your CTR is so good. Hey, an eight dollar harness. Even if this thing sucks, I might as well try it. Right. <laughs> That's what's happening. Right, I put it out by uh, uh, 50 pence uh, a week or so, collect the data and reassess it. Thank you. Yeah, You can go as fast as you want. You make those decisions, uh, but but I think I think it's inevitable. And so it's just a question of how quickly. So Fahad, thanks for coming on, man. Good luck on the Thank harness and congrats on the success so far. Thank you so much. All right, we'll see you. Rolando, you have been so patient. You probably had to step away for a bathroom break. Thank you. <laughs> you're, on, you're on mute, by the way. Ah, I there we go. Do that. Um, Welcome to the My Amazon Guys show. How can I help? So uh, I, I just have a question in terms of the titles. Um, I've been advised uh, or I've seen in other blogs and stuff that short. And we lost him. All right. He'll probably be back here in a second. We'll pull him back in. While we're waiting for Rodolfo to return, I'm going to go back to the chat. Thank you for the super sticker. How do you resolve the issue of FBA taking way too long to ship to a customer? Our best seller is taking 20 days to ship to three address miles from the facility. <laughs> uh, you don't. You, you have no control over this. Offer FBM and take over the buy box. Also, my guess is, is your inventory hasn't fully checked in, and that's why it's taking 20 days. Um, so here's what you need to do, Forge from the Freedom. Go to the inventory page. Put your cursor over the available quantity. And if it says zero, but has inbound, I believe that is your problem. So check that out. Uh, and then you may need to have FBM active if it's not the solution, because some FBAA facilities are just dropping off and they're not doing well. Um, all right. So Kevin says, Rolando, you have an incredible setup. Nice work. How'd you get the wrap around the mic stand? That's a good, I'm going to have to find out the answer to that question too. So um, Rolando, if you're reading this, please uh, send me an email to podcast at my Amazon guy. Let me know what I need to do. Cause Kevin needs to know too. Po post it in the comment section to help him out. Uh, all right. We're back with Rodolfo, uh, not to be confused with Rolando who also came on today. All right. You're back. So, so you were just saying. It's okay. You can call me whatever you want. It's fine. <laughs> We'll call um, you all right. 
Um, so I've been, uh, I've seen other blogs and I've even Amazon uh, suggested that, uh, I lower the titles because I have pretty long titles. Um, I kind of just maxed out everything like titles as long as they can be, uh, what category you towards, uh, in like hardware, hardware Cat- and like tools. And, uh, mm-hmm. I put the blo- the, uh, the bullet points, I made them like as long as possible as many characters and I was just wondering like do you suggest uh as long as possible or somewhere in the middle or shortest because they suggest very short titles because they say uh it helps with like mobile phone users and stuff like that uh this is a great question and there's no perfect right answer but because you're talking to a marketer I'm going to give you the marketer biased answer stuff the hell out of the listing with SEO and 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 let's let's assume for a moment that the person at Amazon that told you shorter converts better is just correct. Let's just assume that he's right. Three percentage points correct. So let's say your normal conversion rate is 5% and with a short title, it's 8%. Well, guess what? The reason the title um, being shorter converts better is because when somebody goes to a shorter title listing, there's less people getting there. And when less people yeah. get there, the person that gets there is more likely to convert because they really found you. And, and so that's, that's why shorter titles convert better. By default, there's a bias there. But let's assume I'm wrong. Let's assume for a moment that they're right. 3% conversion rate benefit and also no traffic loss. Here's the reason why you should still stuff listings with SEO and keywords. The reason is, is because it's two times easier to double your traffic than it is to double, it is, sorry, it's 10 times easier to double your traffic than it is to double your conversion rate. Full stop. You should focus on traffic market share at all costs. Conversion rate can be improved, but the massive gains of your market share that come from having the best in class image like we talked about today, having uh, the listing fully optimized and, and and having a keyword on the main image and putting the keywords everywhere so they have exact matches. Like I, I pretty much just guarantee this, Rodolfo, if you go to your brand analytics and you look at the search query performance report, which I call the ICAP marketing funnel, ICAP standing for impressions, clicks, added cards, and purchases, and you picked one keyword in there and then went and added it to your image, added it to your title, added it to your bullet points, added it to your search terms and your backend alt text of the photos, as well as the face uh, copy in the A plus content. I guarantee you, your market share will go up. Well, why is that? It's because these search terms are used by consumers. And when they see those search terms after typing them in themselves on the listing, and they see them on the listing, they convert better. And when they convert better, you rank better. Then full circle, more traffic to your listing. So that's that's the, the long-winded monologue answer to your question. Stuff the heck out of it. Okay, great. Um, I did, uh, I, if I can ask real quick, I yeah, saw, I, you mentioned the packaging matters, uh, that you, you make sure to put the packaging on the, on the thumbnail so that they can distinguish between you and other sellers. Um, For most products, this is beneficial, but it's beneficial mostly so you get the text, right? So see how sweet heat. Now, obviously, this is a bad example because it's like literally the product. But like, um, if we had another box that was like this, and on the box we could say "sweet heat" even larger than than on the bottle, then getting that text large to be seen by the consumer is super beneficial. So that's why the packaging is generally beneficial. It also makes the listing look more professional, and it, it generates more interest and buzz. So yes, because I was gonna say because my packaging is horrible, like it's just a box. Um, and I was wondering, do you think I should invest more in the packaging, or should I just put like the my my brand name, try and put it in the in the product, the first page? I mean, the first uh, photo. Nobody cares about your brand name. No, nah. <laughs> nobody. Right? Like okay, like put the brand name small. So case example, tell me where the brand name is as quickly as possible on this product. It's somewhere there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can't see it. Yeah, I can't see it. Right there. It's on the top, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you were to go search for hot sauce, I want you right now, name a name a brand of hot sauce. I'll wait. Uh, exactly. I'm really bad with names. Yeah. I'm exactly. Really- <laughs> right? 
Nobody is shopping for brand names on Amazon. They are shopping for solutions. Well, if you would like a solution to solve your dinner dates, to give them a little bit of sweet heat, here's your solution. They remember the label name Sweet Heat. They do not remember Mobster. Nobody cares about your brand name. Amazon okay. killed brand names. Now, obviously, there's exceptions to some of the crazy things I say, including if you sell a luxury item, the brand name is literally everything. Okay. But for commodity items or for run of the mill Joe Schmo items that are look alike items that could be white labeled by the Chinese, brand name does not matter. Pick a good brand name. Don't get me wrong. Build out the brand store, add your branding to the packaging and everywhere else. Do all of those things. But make sure that the, the keyword that's the most important for the listing is bigger than the brand name on the packaging. That's my recommendation. Okay. All right. R Rodolfo, Perfect. thanks for coming on. Uh, appreciate it. Let me know how that goes. I will. Thanks. All right. Cheers, mate. We're going to bring Rolando back because he has an answer to one of our questions. Yeah. Super so simple. Super simple on making your mic stand look more pretty, beautiful. We happen to use some uh, actually compostable bags for our accessories. Okay. And the packaging looks so nice in that blue that all all I did was basically cut. Yep. Just cut the, the top part of it off and just start wrapping it around, you know, right to the point where, oh, there we go. There's oh, the wow. logo. Wow. Or I want that red part to show, right? So now we just go around doing that a couple of times, and then we got our rocket are, logo there and the name of gonna, ours. Are you going to help me with my physical therapy too? You got some, <laughs> you got some guns, man. Um, you I know what? Frozen, anytime. Anytime, I have man. I shoulder, and I've been going to physical therapy for my shoulder, and it's just been a beast. It's been uh, terrible. You know, with shoulders, shoulders are – you, you got to go slow, man, because it, it, you just pick up like a water bottle, depending on how bad, and you're like, oh my shoulder just some yes. simple uh, i remember um i did a little internship with an orthopedic um surgeon way back in the day and wow. you just start slow you just start slow moving them in circles that's all you want like a five pound weight move them in circles that's exactly directions. what i'm doing the problem is, just, is that i have scar tissue in the in the ligament and it's going to take six months to heal so it's a oh, super my, painful my, my, situation my. i got a, I got a nice shot of cortisone into my shoulder on monday though and my pain level went from 10 out of 10 down to 6.5 out of 10. So I'm, I'm in a much happier mood today than I was the past two weeks. Let like me ask that. you, are you at the, your computer like this? All day. Like, like all day, right? All day. Got to get up. Got to get up. Get up about an hour later and go pick up one of the lovely kids that you have, right? Play with them for a little. Or, the, or that five pound. <laughs> you got to get up. Because like this, this, this move is yes. horrible for back and neck and it's shoulders. Terrible. It's horrible, you know. So get yeah. up, move around, go get grab grab a water, go out. Right, You're in right. Atlanta, so go out, yep. get a little sunshine on your face for two minutes, come back. That does wonders for for your back and shoulder. We're, we're expecting power outages and terrible, terrible weather here in the next couple of days. Oh my god! Over here, we're all right. Well, thank you for coming on and showing us that. That was very clever on how you did your wrap. You know, um, easy, easy. Everybody that wants to do it could do it. Just just grab it, wrap it I, around, I, put some tape, clear tape, and it'll do the job. Honestly, I think we just found a new product idea that somebody hasn't done yet. It's like, <laughs> like I want a royalty. Go ahead and do it. I want a royalty. Wrap. And, and by the way, guys, this is exactly how I recommend you do product dev development. Is this this right here? I have yeah. a need. I filled the need, and and Rolando has another thing that's going to fill my bigger need, which is to market it as well, and and stick to what you know, right? Like totally. Like, it, it, don't go to the, the 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 keyword tools and start seeing what's in trending demand. That is a terrible way to do product. Can development. I echo what you just said, Stephen? I've been seeing on so I'm gonna show you do too. Yes, this is a PSA. Do not listen to the idiots that jump on social media that say go to Helium 10 or whatever tool you like. Look at the ranking and how much the search yeah. volume is. Well, go to the Alibaba on YouTube. Oh. It's horrible. Do not do that. You, it's a surefire way to lose money. Fidget spinners has entered the <laughs> chat. <laughs> How many? I, I know two people that bought container loads of fidget oh spinners God. when that happened, and they couldn't sell any of them. And That's even look, a years. In, you go back a year and a half, a lot of that information and advice doesn't apply. You can't do with the things you were doing pre-pandemic 
today. Yeah, like the data gets outdated. So so what a better way to do product development is stick to what you know. So we just heard from Alondo, like on several subjects where he's got this massive amount of inch wide, mile deep expertise. And he could sell, he could create this wrap right now. He would be able to go to market and understand it because he literally just did it himself, right? He understands the product. That's how you develop products. Stick to what you know. Let the data support you after you make the selection. But don't use data to make the selection. Make data to narrow the selection down. 100%. 120%. I hope you come back in two weeks. Our next show is going to be two weeks from today, Thursday noon. Uh, you were a fantastic guest today. Massive amounts of value. Thank you for anytime, coming Anytime. Anytime, man. Anytime. Actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this opportunity to, to invite you to my podcast. I will say yes right now. Okay. All right. I'll have I'll have somebody on my team send you the invite so we get you on. Uh my email podcast at my Amazon I'm an I'm an easy yes, I will be there. Thanks for having okay. me on. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Have a good one. All right, cheers, mate. That is our show today. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. If you like today's show, add a comment, say what you learned, what you liked. Even if you're watching this on the replay, add something to the comment section. We will not be here next Thursday, but we'll be here again in two weeks. You can also tune in Fridays at noon Eastern Standard Time for Jason Master Mateo, who will take written questions. Uh, but in two weeks from now, I will be doing more on-camera questions. Pepper in maybe a couple questions from the chat if we can fill them in. Uh, but I had a great time. I had a, This was a really great show. You'll see the show over on our homepage at myamazonguy.com because I love doing this. I love talking to sellers. I learn so much. I have great interactions. And it brings out the best in all of us. One of my catchphrases for 2023, it's not me against you, other Amazon seller, other Amazon agencies. It's all of us against Amazon. We'll see you next time.